Okay, we just got some flooring and look how much my truck squat. It, uh, it squat quite, quite a bit. Got a load of flooring in here for a new place. I'm kind of buying it early because with uh, the amounts of uh, flooring that are not in stock, we decided to go ahead and pick up something we're happy with before they sell it all. So now it's uh, time to head back, see how heavy this load actually is. Alrighty, today, today is the day that we're going to repair this, this damaged area and tack this hole here. Uh, I believe I mentioned how this is where, where, uh, where some of the drafts and some of the, uh, the uh, rodents could be getting in. I know there's a spot like that under the bathtub and there were mouse turds everywhere. So we're gonna go ahead and cut, cut this out. Pretty much this whole area here, all, all the way out to here. We're gonna come right along the duct work here, come all the way out here, and there's a seam out here that we'll just r r rip it up from. But we're gonna cut along here, and then sawzall kind of thing, not miter saw, sawzall, along this wall here and along over here, missing the studs, of course, because the, there's big two by six beams going going like this and a few going like this but uh we'll, we want to miss all the supports of course and then we will just rip it all up because i'm sure it's nailed down and then and then we'll go over to the bathtub and do the same over there because we have to cut back to the uh to the studs and expose half of the the beam in order to get get our uh, our new floor screwed down properly and the way we do that is we set up our saw blade. This is powered up, so I don't want to touch the blade really. But we set the saw blade so that the saw blade at its furthest down just skims over the top of the beam. So that when we measure and draw everything out, we should be going down the center of the supports leaving just a hair of the plywood left, and then we will remove that with the uh, chisel. Uh, and that way we keep from cutting into the beam and weakening that beam. So, all right, so I gotta make a few cuts or a few lines. I gotta go get my, my level so I can, and my tape measure, and I will be right back. Our first task is to measure from the wall because I'm relying that these walls are straight, straight and even, so along with the beams. Being in a factory, I hope that they uh, did it right because I'm going to cut it up right to the, right to the ductwork right up here. Uh, and I'm hoping that I'm not going to cut into the ductwork, but it's below the plywood, so I should be safe. And so I'm going to measure from over here out to here. And then I'm going to measure the same distance over here, make marks. Use my level as a straight edge. Mark, cut. Bingo, bango. But I'm gonna wear my mask because with this rot, I don't know if there's mold in there or what. So I gotta take my glasses off. Now if we get lucky, I should be able to pry this up and pull this piece out. Okay, you guys. I don't have a camera stand, camera holder. Uh, someone sat on it and broke it while we were moving. So uh, I have one in order. But anyway, here's, here's what I've done. I have built framework. And it's over there too, just to support that 
that corner. Built framework, attached two by fours around here and all along the edge. You can't see it because that piece is sitting on top of it, but I got a board there so that when I screw this down, it's all solid. There's not gonna be any wobbly pieces. What I got going on here is I got to cut a square out of my new board in order to accommodate for this vent. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure uh, where this is at from my end piece here. And I'll just make cuts, cut it all up, and then I'll be done. So what I did was I used some of the old insulation, some of the good stuff that wasn't moldy or or bad and I just filled in the floor joist where where it was missing or very light and so hopefully that will that will help out of course I can't do the whole floor because I'm not pulling up the entire floor so that's going to have to be uh, good enough for there so uh, I have this piece cut out for here but I bought the wrong size cap for the drain that was there for the shower I bought the wrong size cap damn it so I can't uh, I can't put that piece in until I buy a cap, but I can get this piece installed, screwed down. I might get the wall up today because I, I've been waiting to get this flooring done before I raise the wall back up and get it into place because I still have to size the door for a real door. I got to get the rough opening up, but uh, we'll come back to that. So until I get a camera stand, I'm going to have to stop and explain what I'm doing. You can't watch me do it. I, I apologize greatly. I wanted to be able to show you every step of the way and do time lapse throughout the jobs, but I'm not able to do that. But anyway, I got to get my mask on. There's dust floating around here and I'm starting to get stuffy. So I'm going to cut the hole, get this piece screwed in, and then we'll be right back. Okay, so it's getting dark out and I'm going to call it a day. Let's get some light on the subject. Oh. All right, so we got our first piece laid. We got the floor vent cut, and that actually turned out perfect. Uh, we still got this side here because we need to get a different cap size for that. And then once we cap that off, then we can close that up and apply that there. And then we will be ready to finalize the wall, this wall here. I'm going to throw some more 2 by 3s in here to solid, solidify, you know, make it a little stronger. I don't like how weak this wall is. Uh, probably one up through here. Probably one on one side of these here. And same thing over here just to strengthen them up. There's a two by three here. And one over here. But there's not enough in here to make it solid. Because once our drywall is attached to it, it's going to strengthen it even more. So I... Uh, this wall is just kind of sitting in here. I got a few screws tacked over here to hold it in place. Uh, I've got to level it. I've got to make sure that it's the same distance from the wall over here as it is in the middle. Same thing over here. And then we got to make sure that this is all level all the way across. And then that way there, we'll, we'll have an even wall and uh, we won't have weird corners. So I... Uh, Alrighty, so uh, tomorrow we'll uh, start a new day. We'll finish squaring up this wall, make it as true as possible, and then we'll work on the uh, the raw opening for the uh, real door. I don't want I don't want manufactured home doors anymore. And then what we'll do is we'll get all the boxes wherever I want switches and outlets. I'll get them all mounted. And then I'm going to have to run wires, power to all of those boxes. And uh, there's some work that I have to do in the breaker panel uh, to make it a little more usable. Uh, they had this room, the, the uh, septic circulator, and uh, a couple other things running on just one breaker, and that's not enough. So I'm going to split it, one for the bathroom, one for the bedroom. And uh, those breakers are going to be separate. So all the wire, all the plugs and light, lighting that are going to be in the bathroom uh, are going to be on one switch. And everything that's inside the bedroom is going to be on another switch. So I can shut them down independently. Uh, we're going to be upgrading our electrical panel more than likely. It just does not hold enough switches to make this work. So, all right, guys. Uh, thank you for watching. 
It might be a snap or it might be a new video.